You were recently involved in a very uh, public situation with Hock Tan of Broadcom, who tried to take over Qualcomm in a hostile bid. The White House blocked it. How did you navigate that? We spent a lot of time listening to shareholders, quite frankly, and, uh, and then working through uh, how we could resolve what they, what they wanted us to resolve. One of the big issues that comes up when you're, when you're talking about a hostile takeover is, of course, deal certainty. And I think in this case, uh, it, was, it was proven that our board, um, I think we're, we're pretty smart and I think circumspect to, to take sort of a cautious view on that. And then ultimately it ended up that uh, in preparation for 5G, the, you know, the, the, the U.S. government did what it did. But I think today it'd be very difficult to be um, in any type of big merger that requires uh, approval either in the United States or in China. Just the political environment is quite difficult. And I think one of the things we were able to do is I think navigate that environment as a company and sort of remove that uncertainty away from our shareholder base. And we're pleased as to how the stock has been performing uh, after after we've done that. And of course, we've done all the things that we said we're going to do, and we're going to continue to do those things. For you as a CEO, what, what was the sort of range of emotions you went through when you found out that that was not going to happen? Was there like victory, relief? Well, I don't think you really know how to react. It's unprecedented. And there's no playbook, I mean, when, when, when something like that happens. And so you, but luckily the law kind of tells you what you need to do here. Uh, so we did that, and then, and then we moved forward. And I think really our whole mentality now is that that's, that's behind us. Now the, the, um, the real focus on the company is 5G ramp, and then how do we resolve the Apple uh, dispute? Now, part of the reason the deal was blocked is because the administration and the president saw a national security threat. Do you think that threat is real? If you look worldwide, Qualcomm is a leader in 5G, and, uh, and I think they wanted to make sure that that maintained. But quite frankly, I'm not sure anybody really understands everything that happened there. Then there was the flip side, and Qualcomm tried to buy NXP, $44 billion bid. You waited two years for approval. This as trade tensions continue to escalate. The Chinese government never said no. They just let the, the deadline lapse, and the deal was effectively dead. How big a blow was that? You know, it was, um, we kind of moved beyond it. I think we've been very, um, we, were, we were very clear. In fact, I was very clear in terms of what we were going to do. And it played out uh, not the way we wanted originally. But I think we moved beyond it and did the right thing as a company now. There's really no dramatic change, at least our evaluation, anybody's evaluation, of the M&A actionability between, you know, in, in, in China between now and probably since the end, t till the end of the midterm elections in the United States, so in November timeframe. So what we decided to do was remove the uncertainty for our shareholders, remove the uncertainty for both companies and move on. And, and you know, it's, it's proven to be the right decision, at least for us.